Hey, here with Thomas Muse. We're celebrating nature, and uh, today we're actually not really celebrating a plant. Uh, this plant, we're, we're talking about the uh, invasive nature of Japanese knotweed. So uh, you, the question is, what's an invasive? An invasive plant is a plant. Uh, there's two. There's two types of invasives. One um, is a native species that might be considered invasive. That means uh, like a canary grass or some plant that it's actually native to the area, but when it gets into a certain environment it can grow somewhat out of control and, and, and shade out or exclude other plants, okay? Then you have what's called an exotic invasive, and that's what we have with Japanese knotweed. Uh, this plant was introduced to America in the early 1900s as an ornamental perennial. It was brought to England from Southeast Asia. It's a native of Korea, like Northern China, Japan. This plant has uh, become a nuisance plant now it's shown up, I think it's about 37 states in the United States. One of the interesting things about invasive species, one of the things that's fascinating to me is in their native habitat, and it happens to be Southeast Asia for the Japanese knotweed, um, research in the early 90s um, showed that there were about 23 leaf-chewing insects that tend to live in colonies in that area. Now these are insects that help to control the plant. So in its native environment, it has the checks and balances. Um, it has leaf chewing insects. They also found on the underside of leaves and in the stems of uh, fungal pathogens that grow on the leaf and damage the plant. They also found a stem chewing insect that lives in the stem, that bores into the stem of the plant. So we, it has all these uh, native insects. Once the plant came over here, what it, the insects don't recognize it. There's no native insects that that leaf chew, that eat this insect. There's no pathogens that control it, control the growth of it. So it's growing out of control. That's what an exotic invasive does. And that's why we've got to be very careful when you go to the garden center and you're picking out nursery stock. But this is not available as a perennial in the garden center anymore. But 30 years ago, it probably was, 20 or 30 years ago, you could go and get this fallopia japonica. Yes, I want 25 for my garden, please. I mean, crazy, right? Now that you see it, uh, you'll start looking for it and you're going to start seeing it everywhere. Next thing I want to talk about is how to control this plant. Um, if you find it on your properties, the best way to control it is to try to dig up the root. Try to dig the whole plant up, take the soil that's around the root, take the root itself and the foliage and take it all to the Southampton Town landfill in North Sea and put it in the brush pile and you can tell the people at the landfill that you have some Japanese knotweed in that brush and they will separate it. They haven't really quantified the damage that this plant has done um, in the United States, but since it's been in England longer, uh, they've quantitated the amount of environmental damage and, and the cost of controlling the plant. They're up to about 10 million euros to, uh, to control this plant annually uh, in an area that uh, relies on its scenic beauty like here on the east end of Long Island. Um, and everybody's coming here because it's beautiful and uh, all the tradespeople are working here, working for the people who come here because it's beautiful. Uh, the scenic beauty, uh, Japanese knotweed is really infringing on that. Behind me is, uh, we're standing on the eastern edge of Big Fresh Pond, which is a groundwater depression wetland. There's a lot of houses and a lot of people love living in this area because they can see the pond. It's absolutely a beautiful ecosystem over here. And what, uh, what Japanese knotweed is doing is creating a curtain along the roadside and people cannot, these uh, landowners that live right here around me, they cannot see the pond anymore because of the stand of Japanese knotweed. And this stand isn't, isn't going away. Uh, it's it's a very, very difficult to control. And if you could look over uh, me, you'll see a beautiful groundwater depression wetland called Big Fresh Pond here in Southampton you'd have no idea that the pond is there. And that's a big problem that we're facing on the east end. As the area develops and uh, our, the beautiful vistas here, uh, most of the people experience just by driving, driving home from work to work. You know, you see the farm fields as you drive, you see the ponds, you see the wetlands, you see the estuaries. If this plant takes over and grows along the roadside, it's a serious detriment to the, the beauty and the ecology of the east end. There it is again. I saw this stand the other day. It's just young bunch of plants coming up. Why I was interested in this site is um, recently a landscape project here. You can see there's some new white pines that we just planted. This is typically what, what can happen on a landscape site. Um, the, 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 uh, the landscaper doesn't even realize it. He buys some fill from someone and it's got the, the rhizome in it. That's how this plant gets transferred around. This is the, the species you recognize it. It's, uh, 
Japanese knotweed. Um, probably uh, this plant, this huge plant here, probably just came up from a small bit of rhizome that was hidden in the, in the fill when the fill was dumped here for the landscape site. See the joints here, the different segments and the alternating leaves. That's how the plant grows. It has a deep, it has a round rhizome so it can force a lot of air down into the ground. That's why it grows like in the wetland site we were at before. And I'm just trying to get it so that you can identify the plant. If you see it on your property, you want to dig it up and take it to the landfill. Uh, you do not want to move it on your property. You don't want to take it to another location because you like the way it flowers or something because this plant is, is a big problem. This stand, if it doesn't get controlled, is just going to get huge. It'll block out light from the, black, the white pines that are planted up here. These are regular nursery plants and um, the owner's not going to be very happy with it, I'll tell you that. Stop planting invasives.